Hi guys, uh, I'm going to do a bit more work on the camera class. I've been kind of putting this off because it's really, really boring, like the camera stuff. <laughs> um, I've also been doing some work to try and get my laptop back up and running. That's a bit of a pain because um, a lot of the a lot of the sketches and the idea work that I'd done was on there. Um, most of that was on the Git repo. There's a few things that weren't, and all of my 3D modeling software is on the laptop and not on my PC, which is also a pain. Um, so yeah, what I've what I've got in the background here, if I just move myself up out of the way. Um, I just run this. Uh, we've now got the camera mode switcher. That isn't wired in. It doesn't do anything. I forgot how to do that. I spent like 20 minutes last night trying to remember how to wire that in. I just need to go off, and I just realised that you know it's two in the morning. And I'm way too tired for this shit. Um, I think this still works. Yeah, it's still got the weird bugginess and we've got that so the other thing that I've added is now I've got right click menus on the on game objects that have this uh, um, targetable script so this basically um, gives us the ability to uh, control click something to set it as the active target. Um, I need to rethink those buttons because the control and the shift of the zoom aren't they? So if you control click something it's the target and you've got a right click menu, it doesn't do anything but these buttons will have the option to um, to like look at and then set behaviour of the, of the object. Um, yeah so that's that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, I did get the chase camera script kind of working, um, but that kind of needs you, you need a spaceship to be able to do that. So I had um, the basic spaceship flight stuff out of um, out of the, the deep space planets demo, and I kind of based the chase camera around that. What I'm going to do though is uh, we're going to set up an orbit camera today. Uh, which is going to use the polar coordinate system that I'm adding to the Vector 3 uh, class. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that to do the chase camera rather than the um, uh, ra rather than just ripping off the deep space planet one. Uh, I think because that's going to give us a, a slightly slightly more consistent camera system and that it still it uses all of the the, the polar coordinate system uh, because that's probably going to play quite a big part in the way things work in the game. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a blocked nose. Ugh, excuse me. Um, that's gonna do a do a fair amount. So a couple of other things I've been thinking about is the buttons and the icons are probably too small. I think these ones up here are too small. This one's about right. The right click menu is about right. Maybe a little bit too big in this one. So what I'm gonna do is I need to change the graphics up a little bit. Um, this little box here, um, there's another one which has a close and a minimize and maximize option in the top corner and those buttons are almost like so small you can't see them. So I'm going to re-render those out of the SVG files and set those up to be slightly chunkier. Um, what else? I don't know if I have it here, if I stop this. Um, open, 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 ship builder. This is my mock-up of the shipbuilder UI. You probably saw this in the previous video. Um, this doesn't do anything. Obviously, you can play it, but it doesn't actually do anything. On my laptop, which I hadn't pushed up to the Git repo because I'm a because I'm a muppet, basically. Uh, I had <laughs> I had a system where it um, you had blocks and you could add blocks to faces, um, and that was just set up. Um, so yeah, what went wrong there is I committed all of the code to the repo, but I didn't commit. Sorry, I didn't add the scene file to the repo. So I've got loads of code with no, like loads of underlying code with no scene. So what I'm going to do is in this one I'm going to add it in. Uh, as you can see, here's the little the exit button and the minimize and maximize button, which is way too small. 
Um, my other thoughts with this is this layout is not very efficient with screen space so probably what I'm going to do is redo these buttons and put them down here and have this whole panel as a side panel. Um, it shouldn't be too complicated, I'll do that when I get there. Uh, what I want to do is, because this this whole view is going to use the, the orbit mode camera, um, we're going to do that. So I kind of put this together, right? If you if you've had a look at the the kind of the, the alpha one readiness spreadsheet or checklist, um, I've not put in player ship building as one of those because I think that's going to add in weight. While, while players could build ships, I think that's going to add in way too many variables for testing to start with, and I want to do ship building as like its own alpha, uh, and that will be the the major feature added. So alpha one is basically just going to be gameplay. You can select a ship from a list of pre-built ships um, uh, and I'm kind of setting this up in a kind of a, a hacky sort of way so I've got a, a way of making those preset ships that isn't going to be editing XML files by, manually although it will probably come down to that. Um, what I'm going to try to do for the alpha is get the um, procedural ship building added or at least a basic version of that uh, and probably what that will do is I've, I've experimented with a couple of different ways of doing that and uh, what that will probably do is I'll set up um, like building blocks combinations so um, the ships are built in slices so you have like a command module up the front, engines at the back and then like blocks of stuff in the middle and then depending on the size of the ship it kind of spreads out um, I worked on a couple of algorithms for generating ships, one of them kind of worked quite well. Um, but I think it would benefit for the fact that I could ha I've could i got like 10 pages of code, and almost a thousand lines of code that designs good looking engine blocks, but it still only randomly creates the same five, so what I could just do is store those five combinations in an XML file and pick randomly from those, I think that's probably a better way of doing it for the time being. Um, and then the, the the kind of procedural generation will randomly mix and match between block um, like big chunks yeah so there's that uh, so orbit mode camera definitely a requirement for that which is why I'm going to work on that today I've probably talked for now five minutes so eight minutes I've talked for eight minutes uh, so we're going to go fast forward mode now I'm going to do some uh, do some work on this and uh, and then when we come back, we'll have a look at, hopefully, a working orbit camera. Okay, cool. Right, see you in a bit. Bye. So I'm wondering what input mouse scroll data delta is, right? Can I just say that this is really crap documentation? What is input mouse scroll data? It is the current mouse scroll data delta. But what is it? What does it mean? Does it mean the, scro the mouse wheel scroll data? Or does it mean the when you click and drag? Because that's what I want it to mean, but I don't think it does. <laughs> like. I, I got to say that the Unity documentation is pretty good, right? Like ninety-nine percent of the time. But then sometimes you get like something like that, which is so completely useless. <laughs> I don't think is what I, I think it is the mouse, like the kind of the the up and down scrolly wheel thing. You can't see what I'm doing. That thing. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I was just browsing the documentation while I was working on that and thought it was in it. <laughs> thought it was uh, an interesting thing. Anyway, back to fast forward.
Okay, so uh, you've probably seen zipping around, uh, it zips. So left mouse button, press the play button first. Pro tip, heard it here first. Uh, right, left mouse button, y axis lifts up and down. We have a, an 80 degree clamp and negative 80 degree clamp on there. Got a spin as round as much as you like on the x axis. This is nice, I like this, this is nice and fluid. Uh, I've inverted the X and the Y axis, uh, I might set that as an option, but it was a bit weird with the, the camera. If, if you, if you like, rotate up with the positive Y movement, it's a little bit weird, I don't know. Maybe it's just down to personal preference. It, it, if it's something to add to the options, then it's something to add to the options. Um, I've added min zoom, uh, to the um, uh, auto clamps between minimum and maximum zoom, as you can see here. So maximum zoom now, and then minimum zoom. I've added these to the base camera controller class because that seems like something that we'd want on everything. Um, yeah, I like this. So this is probably going to be like the main camera that's always used in the game. I mean, the, the kind of the RTS camera and the chase camera are nice ideas. Um, I kind of see this this mode and the, the chase camera mode as the two main things people yeah. use. I was like, I'm not quite sure whether to use the Cartesian one, uh, the Cartesian or the um, like the RTS style camera yet. Although that did take the most time to implement so far. Oh well. So yeah. So I guess probably what I'm going to do is um, I won't do the chase camera straight away because what I want to do first is implement some sort of navigation stuff so that we can actually fly around the world and, and, and do do things. Um, that's based on the... Um, uh, that's that's going to be based on splines, uh, Bezier splines. Uh, there's a really good tutorial that I linked in the group the other day. Um, if you check the Facebook group, it's, it was a couple of days ago. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember the blog that was on, but they've got loads of really good Unity tutorials, um, and they're kind of Unity tutorials for more programmers than uh, than designers, which is quite nice. A lot of the Unity tutorials out there seem to be focused on designers, uh, whereas these guys they're like, let's go straight in, let's make some custom tools to go in here, so that you know you've got like a uh, custom dragger things in the, the in the design view, and you've got cust custom layouts in here. Um, and let's go and hit the programming behind that. They did a really good layout. In fact, I'll stick a link somewhere, uh, probably in the description. So I've gone through. I've done most of that. Um, I picked some. I, I picked pieces that I thought we'd want um, to get a Bezier spline uh, system. Uh, I think I can actually view that. So you can see I've got loads of extra stuff. Like I've got Lion and Bezier spline in this miscellaneous tools namespace. Um, the Bezier curves is a lot of code, uh, but basically that gives us a Bezier curve mono behavior, which we can apply. Um, it then gives us a Bezier, which is like the underlying data type. So we can actually uh, this is a static class which does all of the calculations for it. Um, and then there's a Bezier curve inspector, which inside the Unity editor gives you nice widgets and stuff to to work with, which is cool. So we're going to use that for navigation, uh, and I've got like in my sketchbook loads of loads of doodles about how the different navigation modes are going to work and how like different uh, AI modes are going to work based on those. Um, in fact, somewhere in here in ship controllers, I think I got navigator, which is this huge class. It's not actually that huge. I mean, it's it's big. It's got loads of functions in it. Um, it doesn't do anything because I'm not implemented as loads of. <laughs> Uh, loads of I need to go through and put non-implemented uh, ex exceptions in there to to do that, uh, so that at least if I do something, it fa fails. Anyway, Navigator is a we're going to go over this in a bit more detail, but it's basically a state machine. In fact, I think the next video is probably going to be this. Uh, it's basically a state machine. We've got states. We've got a, a run state machine, a coroutine which flips through states. Um, 
public navigation methods. These are these are like kind of the the, the accesses onto it. So navigate to location will work out with the current uh, with the current ship. It will plot a Bezier's blind course to this goal. Uh, navigate to dock will if you um, if you pass in a dock a game object with a dockable uh, with a dockable script attached to it. The idea is that that will um, work out how to go in so that it comes in to the docking port. So it'll be using the control nodes on the spline to get a nice curve so it'll like go up over the top and then into a docking port. We're going to use that for like the drones and uh, for docking at stations and anchorages. Um, yeah, so we've got some uh, some great ideas. So yeah, I'm going to... What I'm probably going to do now is I'm going to open up the Google spreadsheet um, and go through roughly what I want to do on that. So that will be the next video, and then the video after that will be me doing that. Uh, will be me doing. Uh, will be implementing the navigator. Cool. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Rock on. Bye.